Oh, I'm going Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
want to thank God for want to appreciate God for the privilege and we want to thank God for having us together again um, on behalf of my daddy who said I should come and sign in for you, you know. <laughs> and my mommy as well uh, Pastor Dr. Christine and Mrs. and Pastor and Tim I want and the whole pastors and members of Divine Hope Assembly International want to welcome the AMF to this uh, September meeting. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, the Bible says in Hebrew 12 22 that we have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, in heavenly Jerusalem. Um, anytime we gather like this, we know that something uh, is bound to happen. Something good is bound to happen. And especially when we have uh, some uh, uh, thing that can benefit us as a body of Christ, uh, that our guest speaker will also be doing. Uh, we know it's going to be an exciting time, so we are so happy to have you. And we say, God bless you. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Daddy, thank you. That was so short and action packed. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Amen. Are we ready this month? Are we ready this morning? The word for today, the church impacting the community. Praise the Lord. The what? The church impacting the what? There is no small community. Every one of us say we are a what? We are a community. And I want us to be open-minded with those of us that are joining from across, please let us be open-minded to receive what God has in store for us. You know, we don't just plan the prayer that, have been, that has gone towards this program. So I know you are not making a mistake. You are not here by accident. And I know that the reward of a faithful servant, God will grant unto you this morning in the name of Jesus. I'm yeah. bringing forth our own mama. She's one of my mamas in this place. Is going to be speaking what God has deposited for today. As I call on our pastor of Divine Hope Assembly, Arundel, Pastor Sherry Amadal, to give one more. Amen, doctor. Please, I mean, I don't know how to pronounce it. But she has affected me. So, come in your welcome in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just ask more anointing, more grace, more favor. Amen. Amen. If you can stand with me on your feet as we go before the throne of grace. Mighty God, we just thank you and praise you for your grace and your new mercies that we see day by day. Heavenly Father, we pray right now, oh God, that you will take full control in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hide me behind the cross that only your glory will be revealed, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let these lips of clay say only what you've given, oh God. Our hearts and our minds are receptive to the word. So Holy Spirit, speak and minister to us, oh God, that when we depart from this place, oh God, will be liberated, oh God. Lord, we'll be empowered and we'll be ready to impact every community that we're affiliated with. Show yourself strong. Say, the Lord God rebukes your devourer. You will not steal our seed of understanding. You will not distract us on today. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we glorify you and we honor you. Have your way in each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. For it's in Jesus' holy and majestic name. And all the people that love God and agree did say with a loud voice, Amen. Amen. I want to take a moment just to say thank you to our the president of African Ministers Fellowship, Pastor Stephen Olajumi. God bless you, sir. Our vice president in his absence, Pastor Reggie Opara, 
to uh, the faithful man of God, our general overseer of this house, hallelujah, Dr. Christopher Amen. and Pastor Ann, Timmy, Pastor Salako, God bless you all. Amen. Amen. To each and every one of you in your respective places, to the executive committee, I give God the glory and the honor for your life. Amen. Amen. To my husband, amen, who's on his way, my best friend, amen, my king, the, the pastor of our house, and Pastor Amadou, who I appreciate him as well. Let's look at what the word, word, let's look at the word of God that the Lord has given us on today. On today, we would like to make sure that we make ourselves ready and receptive for that word. Amen? Yeah. And on today, as we prepared ourselves, our prayer is that when we leave here, we're going to have a greater understanding of what God requires from us as we impact the community that we're in. Amen? And a lot of times we think that our community is just where our church is located. But how many of you know that there's already a community between us and God? Amen? Amen. That's the first community that God showed me. Then he said, then there's the community of our household. Amen? Amen. And then there's the community of our churches and our workplace and all the other places. But the most important thing that God wants us to know as believers, touch yourself, say, she's talking about me. God wants us, you and me, to have a profound impact wherever we go. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I preach that by today when we leave, we'll leave invigorated, we'll leave empowered, we'll leave with a greater understanding, with new oil, and we'll be ready to do all of the things that God has called us to do and anointed us to do. Amen? Amen. And that when we're doing them, the people that we're involved with, their lives will be forever changed for the better. Amen? Yeah. So that's our purpose to be in here. Let us look at it. The first thing that the Lord said to me is that when we're talking about impacting the community, there first has to be an impact on you and I. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Because there can't be an impact on you and I through with God without us being able to impact the community. Because if there's if God doesn't have an impact on us, what are we pouring into the community? Amen? Some of the same things that they already have. So let's look at the word of God on today. Amen? I'm starting at Matthew, the fifth chapter. We're going to be at the 13th to the 16th verse. Amen? Amen. And this is what the 13th verse says. It says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if you have but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is this for good for nothing, but to be cast out, to be trodden underfoot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen? Amen. In order for us to have an impact, God first has to have an impact on us. Amen? We have to have ourselves surrendered. Now, when I came here, I knew I was talking to people that are already believers. Amen? I'm talking to pastors. I'm talking to ministers. I'm talking to willing workers. If that's you, just give God a wave, clap, a wave, a wave of praise. Say, it's me, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not here by accident, and God didn't choose you just for you to use your gift in the church. Amen? The gifts that we have go beyond the church. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. The word impacting is a, is a verb. Turn to your neighbor and say it's a verb. Yeah. It requires action. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. You can't have an impact by just staying in your seat. When you're talking about impacting the community. Amen? You can't have an impact, hallelujah, by doing nothing. It requires action. Hallelujah. How many of you know that most people in the community already have an expectation of the church? 
How many of you know that? I know sometimes we see them and they, they look like they're going to drink and they're going to party and they're doing this and they're doing that. But all over the world, they have, hallelujah, an expectation of the church. I remember when I was 18, I was sitting in a restaurant with an older African lady and we were eating. And uh, she was from someplace else but had relocated to Germany. Amen. And we were talking about the church, as it turns out. And she said, well, you know, most people don't even understand the church. No, she said, the church doesn't understand that we are people. Because that turn, as it turns out, she was, she was a burlesque dancer. Amen? And she was someone that I had met because I lived on the economy in Germany, and she was my neighbor. And so she said, they look at people like me, and they think we're throwaways. And that always stayed in my mind. Amen? Amen? So I want us to understand it's not even just in this country that they have it. all over the world. The community has an expectation of the church. Amen? Amen? So one of the first words that God had shared with me when I was looking at community, God is just so awesome. If you're thinking he's awesome, somebody shout glory. Glory. <laughs> The first word that he showed me was commune. Hallelujah. Amen. Commune. What is it to commune? It's like having something in common, right? It's a coming together of. It's having the same like mind. It's having the same uh, purpose and the same goals. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's look at Hebrews. Hebrews 10, 19 to 25. And we may not read all of the scripture, but just jot it down and take it home. And, and, and when you get it home, look over it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So Hebrews 10, the 19th verse says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to the end, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated us for, through the veil that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. Hallelujah. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to that profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and and that and to and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. Amen. So God is saying the time is going to come where you won't be able to commune, where we won't be able to impact the community. So God wants us to do it now. Turn to your neighbor and say, do it now. Do it. No, touch them. Say, listen to me. Do it now. Do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you know that the community is waiting on us? There's people out there that are hurt. They're hurting. They're broken. They're devastated. They need to be healed. They need to be lifted up. They need to be encouraged. So they're waiting. They are waiting on you and me. Amen? Amen. The next part of this word, when I was looking at community, I saw the word unity. Y'all know we're studying unity. Those of y'all that are in Divine Hope Assembly, right? We're studying unity in the body of Christ. Yeah. So when I looked at this topic and I saw it, I said, commune with unity. Community. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I, I thought, look at God. He's just so awesome, right? Yeah. He brings us right to an understanding that he wants us to be unified with where we are. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 
I'm not going to read the whole three, one through 27. That's going to be one that I want, I'm going to want you to go and read on your own. Amen? Hallelujah. Read the books. But it's talking about the diversity of gifts. Amen? And how each gift that is given to us has a benefit, has a purpose. So the gifts that you have and that I have have a purpose. They may not be the same. Amen? In fact, most of them are not the same, but they work with the same spirit. They work because of the same blood that was shed on the cross in Calvary. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, if I put my gift with Minister Gideon's, with Pastor Ola Jimmy's gift, and we begin to work under the unction of the Holy Spirit, how do we How much can get done? How much will we accomplish? Amen, somebody. Amen. And that's what God wants us to know. Some of us have one gift. Some of us have two. Some people have three, four, five, many gifts. But whatever God has given us, God wants us to use it where we are. He wants us to use it in the community where we are. Amen? Amen. Your gift goes beyond these four walls. Amen? Hallelujah. Ephesians. Ephesians. Hallelujah. Four, one through six. How many of you know that we all work together? The devil couldn't even stop us. How many of y'all know if we all came together and got in that community, so many people's lives would be changed for the better? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 1 to 6 says this. I therefore, now this is Paul talking, who used to be Saul. Amen? We would remember him. How was he impacting the community when he was Saul? He was grabbing people by the neck, beating them, choking them, kicking them. Stop talking about Jesus. Right? But then when he had an account, I don't know, shake. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory be to God. When he had an encounter with Jesus, he impacted the whole world. He's still impacting the world today. Amen? Hallelujah. So this is what he said. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech ye that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. With all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Hallelujah. So that lets us know that the gifts that we have are for each other and for the people that are on the outside. When I was looking at that, the Lord said, tell my people, hallelujah, that when we engage and impact the community, don't look down on them. Even if we come across the drunk, the town drunk, that is staggering and falling down. Lift him up. Pick him up. And give him a word of encouragement. Hallelujah. So that he can turn away from the drinking. God said with all lowliness and meekness, God wants us to remain humble. Sometimes we look at where we are and we say, do these people even care? They do. They, some of them are just going through some things, and we have to know that. Amen? God said, impacting commune and unity equals the community. <coughs> Hallelujah. So here's my question. And if you haven't already asked yourself, or if you asked yourself this a long time ago, I want you to go back to where your church is, where your house is, where your school is, where your work is, and I want you to ask and look around again. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, look again. 
What do you see in your community? What are what is the demographics? Especially where your church is. What are the demographics? Who are the people? What do the people need? What do they already have that they do annually or monthly or quarterly in the community that lifts up the community? It's time to do our homework. A lot of times we think we already know people, we already know the situation. And the fact of the matter is that we really don't. We have some preconceived notion of what we think people are and who they are. Hallelujah. But God said to me, he said, tell them to do an assessment. Take a survey, look around, and then come back and have a discussion with the church. I said, come back and have a discussion with the church, with the body of Christ, about your findings. Amen. Amen. I love something that Pastor Lana said when he came and talked to us about ethics. One of the things that he said is that he said, we should be influencing everything. And he's right. We are the people of God. Hallelujah. We should have a positive impact, not only in our homes, in our house, in our schools, but in this very community where the church is. Because they're waiting on us. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Come up with a game plan. What can you do to help? What's already there? What are they already doing? Amen. When I was driving here, the Lord said, tell them that fall festivals are going on now. How many of our communities have fall festivals? A lot of times as a church, we assume these things with other things. God said, I am the creator of fall. Have you seen the colors? Anybody? Have you seen the colors? How the oranges and the blacks and the browns and the greens all come together how the fresh fruit and vegetables grow, how the air even changes. Every season, every community is doing something. You have a summer festival, you have a spring festival, you have a fall festival, and you have a winter festival. Do we know these things about our community? We should go over and see what's going on. The Lord said if it's a wholesome gathering, Go gather ourselves so we can see how we can improve, how we can bring, bring it up, take it to its next level. Amen? Maybe it's through teaching a class. Amen? Hallelujah. Maybe it's through ministering the gospel. Because people are looking for the word. They're hungry. Especially in the season that we're in now. There's so much division. They're looking for somebody that's going to come and unite us. They're looking for somebody that's going to come and pray and not have a hidden agenda. Amen. Amen. That's us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's talk about the power, hallelujah, of God and prayer, how it impacts us. Hallelujah. Let's look at Luke, Luke 24. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Luke 24, I'm starting at 45, 45 to 49. Hallelujah. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is behoved, Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send a promise 
of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city. Somebody say, wait. Wait, wait. wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Amen. Amen. How many people in here filled with the Holy Spirit? I just want to see. Give God a wave off. And if you know that you feel, just give him a wave off. Say, God, fill me again. Re renew me, oh God. Let, let, let it overflow. Let the Holy Spirit over, overflow in me. It's that Holy Spirit that will help us to make the impact. Amen. Amen. It's that Holy Spirit that says, you can't just go operate on your own. You need to pray about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts 1 and 8 talks about even the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in me and you. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 10, and 4 tells us even put on the whole armor of God. Because even though we're going out here to engage the community, there's some people that we're going to come across. There's some spirits that we're going to come across that are going to try to stop and hinder the mission and the work of God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. That Holy Spirit will help us to know what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. First Thessalonians 5 and 16 tells us to what? Pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and I will hear from heaven and heal their land. A lot of times when we do things in the community, we just want to jump up and grab the mic and say, repent. The end is near. That's our go-to. Am I right? Thing with that is people going, what? The Bible says, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. So God wants us to go out when we're having an impact. He wants us to bring them in. And so you bring them in by embracing them. Amen? And then you give them the word, which gives the lash to correct them. Amen? And then you keep bringing them in. And you give them the lash, the word, to bring the correction. Amen? Remember earlier I said every community has an expectation of the church. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. I want to go into talking about impacting the community like Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. There's scripture here, John, the, the first chapter through the fourth chapter. Y'all know the word. Let's go home and read it. But to summarize it, that's when Jesus began. And when he began, he never looked, he never looked back. Amen. He didn't look back at his mama. He didn't look back at Joseph, his daddy. He didn't look back. When you impact the community, you can't look back. The only way you can look back is to say, all right, what did I do here? What worked and what didn't work? What do I need to improve on? Amen. In other words, Jesus didn't relent. He didn't stop. Some of us, we, we impact the community or we engage the community when it's convenient. How many of us invade, uh, are engaged in the community when it's convenient? I love something about evangelist Pansy Royce. Pansy, wherever Pansy go, Pansy had that scripture in tracks. She'd be just whipping them out. Whip. You can be walking into the store with Pansy. Pansy be like, hey. We went to see Mommy uh, mommy uh, Morgan. We all walking down the hall. There was a little nurse aide walking by. We in the nursing home. Here goes Sister Pansy. Oh, hey, how you doing? God bless you. There's a word. Amen. Wherever she goes. And I, I remember looking and seeing that, and I was like, wow. And I keep my little tracks in my bag, but I ain't quick like that. She got them right in her pocket. I'll be fumbling and digging. Let me take Praise the Lord. That's how you impact. 
You impact even when it's not convenient. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. John 4, 7 to 40. Go home and read it, but this is what it's about. It's about the woman at the well who came to the well. Our communities have so many women at the well. And they're waiting on us to come to the well. They're, they're just waiting. A lot of times we think that they feel like, oh, they're going to judge me. That's not it. I can promise you. Even the hardest of the hearts. Once you approach them and start talking to them, and they say, well, what do you want? Well, I'm just here to share the good news about Jesus Christ. Well, I already know Jesus. Okay, that's good. So since you already know them, you're a born-again believer. Yep, I'm a born-again believer. What do you want me to pray about? What do you want me to be praying about when I leave? That's how, that's my hook. Because then they say, oh, yeah, my mother had a heart attack or uh, my grandma got cancer. So even the hardest heart needs prayer or they know someone that needs prayer. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Jesus changed not only her life, because he took the time. And keep in mind, this is when a time when Jews didn't associate with Samaritans. Why? Because they thought they were from a mixed breed and they were below them. The Bible says even that they were treated as dogs, like they were beneath them. But Jesus never did that. And then here we go calling ourselves, what's that word, the C word? Does anybody know it? Thank you. Christian is supposed to be Christ's life. He never treated her like a dog. He didn't say, oh, you sleep with this one and you sleep with that one. You just sleep around. He just told us some really pointy things, right? He said, well, actually, the person that you with really isn't your husband. But it's the one, that's the one that you live with. And then that call drew her in. What did he do? He drew her in with the word of God and with love. And then she went back and told the whole community, the whole town, to the point that the whole town came and believed on that day. They didn't even want Jesus to leave. Amen. That should be our impact. When we come into the community, when we come in, when we're doing anything, whether we're going to the nursing home, whether we're doing something out in front of our church, whether we're doing something in the prison, they shouldn't even want us to leave. Or they should at least be saying, when are you coming back? Amen. Amen. One of the things that we do in our in Divine Hope Assembly, we do a food distribution. But before we did the food distribution, in Adirondack County, we went out and we canvassed the area. And we were just talking to the people, and I would say to some of the people, well, what, do you, what do you want to see in the community? You know, what, what is it that you want us to know? And I'll never forget what this white woman said. Her name was Caroline. She said, okay, uh, she called me Minister Sherry. Minister Sherry, just be visible. She said, a lot of churches come, and we don't even know they're in the community. Does your community know you're there? That's my question to us. Does your community know that you're there? Or do they see you coming and going on Sunday? Do they see you posting for the pictures, for the Facebook that we're going to post at the end of the day so everybody can like them and love them? Amen? Amen? But that woman said, be visible. And I never forgot that. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus didn't wait on the community to come to him. He went to the to the community. Some of us are waiting on the people to come running in to hear the word. They're not coming to run in. You got to run out and get them and bring them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And listen, I love God. God said, tell the people, don't worry about having an accent. How many of you know that we're all immigrants? Does everybody here know that? Do we really know that? Because, see, there's a lot of hatred and anger going on that want to make us feel less than. 
white and black, everybody here is an immigrant. The only people that aren't are the Native Americans. Do we understand that? So even in Jesus' time, everybody had an accent. So we, don't, we shouldn't be saying, oh, I got an accent. They're not going to understand me. Listen, Moses said the same thing. And what did he God say? Take him. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Exactly. So that's, that's not even an excuse anymore. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus was visible to the community. Are we visible? When was the last time you went and knocked on your neighbor's doors? All of us got a team of evangelists that go out. But when is the last time that you touch yourself? Say, I'm the, I'm the pastor. Touch yourself. Say, I'm the pastor. If you press it, touch yourself if you're the pastor. Say, I'm the pastor. When is the last time you went and knocked on the door? Because, see, we want to send a team of evangelists. But the lead starts with you Amen. and me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're the number one evangelist. You are the top. I know the title is pastor or bishop or pope or whatever, but you are the head. You should be leading the charge and the way. Hallelujah. Praise God, somebody. Listen, this is for our benefit. Now let's talk about the church's impact through love and compassion. John 6, John 6, 2 to 14. Of course, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But I just want to point out just a few parts of this. Hallelujah. There was somebody that was at the pool of Bethesda. We know this guy. He was there for how long? 38 years. Our community is there for 38 years. Some of these communities are 76 years old. They're 99 years old. They're 100 years old. How old is your church? That's how I'm going to say this is the guy at the pool of Bethesda. Hey, Amen. How, how old are we, Dr. Timmy? 16, 17? Oh, oh yeah, 17. 17. The community is here for 17 years. How often do we go out and say, take up your mat and walk? Your sin is forgiven. We are the people of God. The same, God said, those that believe on me, greater works than that they shall do than these. The power is in your hand and in my hand. Why are we reluctant to lay hands on people and say, be healed in the name of Jesus? Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Lord, take the, the, the taste of the alcohol out of his mouth. Take the desire to get high out of a out of a mouth and out of a soul. Hallelujah. We are Christians and we're not powerless. God has already given us the power. Remember that song? I've got the power. <laughs> Amen. You've got the power. Touch your neighbor, shake him, say, You've got the power. You've got the power. You've got the power. Somebody is waiting on you to come lay those anointed hands on them. Somebody is waiting on you to come and speak to them and say, Rise up and be healed from cancer. Rise up and be delivered from AIDS. Hallelujah. There's nothing too hard for our God. Jesus impacted the whole world. Yeah, he had people come to him. And then he saw so many people that looked faint. And he said, I can't send these people away. I've got to feed them. The disciples said, we don't, how, where are we going to get food to feed all of these people? We don't even have money. Somebody said, there's a little boy over here that's got a lunch. He's got two fishes and five loaves of bread. 
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jesus said, bring it in. He said, tell the men to sit down. Now imagine if the man is there, you know his wife is there, and them three children is there. Hallelujah. He prayed over it, and they separated it. Everybody ate. And then when they gathered up the remnants, somebody say the remnants. There was 12 baskets. Hallelujah. That tells us that everything that we have need of, that our God will supply. Hallelujah. One of the things that Peter said, Peter said, Jesus kept saying, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, I love you. He said, no, Peter, do you love me? He said, you know I love you. Peter, do you love me? He said, then feed my sheep. When is the last time we went out and fed the sheep? I know there's some goats out there. But God said, just look at the sheep and the goats. You know, come on together. Bring them all in here. But you know what happened? We go out to the community thinking that we're going to meet all these lovely sheep. And we come across a goat that bite us on the hand. And we say, I ain't going out there no more. Honey, you just need to get you some vaccine and put that on in a band-aid and keep moving. Hallelujah. People are going to offend you. People are going to act ungrateful. We, what happens in the church is that when somebody acts ungrateful or they disrespect us, what do we say? I ain't going to help him again. We won't say it to him, but in our spirit. Uh, you, you, you won't get nothing else from me. Hmm. Right? That's true. But the fact of the matter is that's the one that we need to keep coming back to to help until he knows, don't bite my hand. Don't. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm talking about having love and the same compassion that Christ had. Amen? No. We have this saying in Anna on the County. It's grow, succeed. It's grow, succeed, and build. We, we say in our school, grow where you're planted. Whatever community you are in, that's where you are planted. Now it's up for you, it's up to you to grow and spread out. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. It's not up to the people, it's up to us. Touch yourself, say it's up to me. Hallelujah. I have some things here, and I, I brought up some little handouts where I talked about doing some social programs, doing some daycares, food sources, health care. Amen? Amen? I know you're saying, but I'm a small church. You can still make an, make an impact with what you have and who, or who you have. Amen? Hallelujah. Galatians 6, 1 and 9 says, be willing to help. Go home and read all of that. But be patient when you're dealing with people that are downtrodden and broken. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because it's only the grace of God that it's not you and me. Amen? Hallelujah. Matthew 25, 32 to 46. Go home and read that whole thing. God said it's not our place to judge of why somebody needs help. We see them people standing at the safe way. We see them standing. You got some change? And I remember I was so offended. I, I think I gave this testimony. And the Lord said, why are you offended that you see him and you know he's going to ask you for money? So you know what I did? I said, God, forgive me. I repented. And I said to God, what do you want me to do concerning him? And the Lord said, try to have you know, keep some, some money with you. Because I don't really carry cash like that. Pastor God, I love you so much. <laughs> 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 Pastor God. I tell you the whole story. <laughs> they don't even know the whole story. They, all they know is that I was sad. I, I don't 
don't know. I probably wasn't what I did. I didn't want to give him what I had. So I don't even know. I can't even remember why I was offended. But I was offended. And the Lord said, why are you offended? Amen? And so I made it a point to keep something with me so that when, when I see him or anyone, I just press it in their hand and say, be encouraged. What, what's your name? What's, and then I just have a little conversation. Sometimes I'll just pray right there, dear God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is happening here, you change. Turn it around. Amen? Amen. And I keep moving. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Impacting the lives of our youth in the community, the next generation. Those youth that we see out there, that's the next church. We have to grab them. While we're grabbing them, make sure that we've already grabbed our own. Earlier, I told you that the communities that we have first are the community with us and God. That's the first community. The second community is our wives and husbands and our children. That's the next community. Then the church. Then the community. Amen. Have a plan for those children and those youth that are out there in the community. You don't have to pour, you don't have to, what, I, what I'm saying is whatever the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, concerning them, do it. Amen? Amen? But whatever it is, make sure that it's geared towards the community. Remember I said do an assessment of your community? Look around and take a look at the demographics. See what they need, who they are. Most of our communities now have a lot of Hispanic people. Amen? Amen? So that means that at the least, our tracks need to at least be also Spanish. We need to also have information in our church where they can get to Casa, or they can go to these other places that they need to go to. That's the church having an impact where we are. Amen? Amen. Yes. Let your church be a food pantry if you can do it. If you can't, then do what we did, and that is have a delivery once a month and then share that out right at that moment so that the people will know, oh, I can come to them on the third Saturday. They are here from 10 to 12. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord said to me, some of the children out there need community service learning hours. Bring them into the church. Start a mentorship program. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 4 and 12 tells our youth to let no one despise your youth. So don't despise the youth that are out there. Most of those kids that are out there that are getting into trouble, they're getting into trouble because they don't have someone to guide them along the way. Many of their parents are working two, three jobs. Some of them are in single parent households. So it's the, remember I said the community has an expectation of the church? That's part of that expectation. Mentorship programs, daycares, Bible, summer Bible classes, vacation Bible schools. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. I wrote down here, start up a, a develop a, a after school program. Hallelujah. Right. Develop uh, uh, classes. I love something that Dr. Timmy did. Anybody that was getting ready to go to college that was in a certain grade, we had a class for them so that they can boost their SAT scores. Amen. Yeah. That's what the community needs. They need more of that. Amen. Yeah. The Lord said, sponsor a tour to the HBCU. We are right here in Maryland, uh, in Maryland D.C., and Virginia. We got Howard, we got Compton, we got uh, UNBC, which I know is not necessarily HBCU, but it's looking like one more and more to me. Am I right? We got the University of Maryland. Amen, somebody. I'm talking about making an impact where you are. Hallelujah. The Lord laid on my heart, the young Samuel, the Esther groups, advertise that out to the community. And when the community comes, let's treat them well. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
I know you the, the, the people of God. Tell them, look at them, say, I know you the people of God. But I'm going to need you to treat the visitors well. I'm going to need you to treat the community well. Regardless of what we think about people, these everybody has the same hopes, dreams, and aspirations. They want to take care of their family. They want to feed their family. They want their, they want a safe neighborhood for their family. Amen. Sometimes when people come, and I see it even just at my local branch, if I see it, I'm sure you do. Somebody is stumbling, smelling like alcohol or weed, and the first thing we do is we gather everything up and we kind of get to ourselves. And then and if they start fidgeting, we are you okay? What we should say is there's something else that you need. Can I help you? We need to soften our stance. Because to anybody that comes in that's bold enough to walk in, that means they need something from you. Whether it's food, whether it's drink, whether it's prayer, whether it's money. But we have missed opportunities when people come because we treat them badly, because they smell bad, they look bad. And that, that to, to some people, that's a barrier. It shouldn't be. We had a guy come in, uh, his name is uh, um, Ernest. Ernest had the look, the wine bottle, liquor bottle in his back pocket. Stayed for the sermon, heard the word, he got ready to leave. We were greeting at the door. I went to shake his hand, he said, oh no, my hand is dirty. I said, well, so much so in mind. I've been touching everything. I've been touching the door now. And he kind of laughed a little bit, but when I looked into his eyes, tears have welled up in his eyes. Why would he, someone think that they're dirty and they can't shake our hand? And I'm not saying that that's us, but that's the, that's the, that's the image that we give to people. Like, I'm here, and you're, you're here. Hallelujah. People already know everything that they're not. They need to hear from us what they can be. They need to hear from us what the possibility is. Amen? They need to hear that there's hope. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I put on here some other things. Sponsor of my rally. That's a music and youth rally. Have a sunshine band, five to nine years. Yes. Young, excited, and saved, 10 years to 25 years. YWE, Young Women of Excellence, 11 years to 29 years. YMB, Young Men of Valor, 11 years to 29 years. Let's develop a plan, hallelujah, to address the, the community. Amen. Sure. Now I want to talk about, hallelujah, Gideon. Not you, Gideon. <laughs> God told me to tell us he can do a lot with a little. Remember, Gideon went out there and he had all those, he had thousands of people. By the time God finished, he had 300. I know we want the whole church to come out. We, want, we wanted the whole church to come out today, right? Fact of the matter is, is sometimes when you're doing something to impact the community, you're only going to have a handful of people. So you got to use what you got. Amen? And appreciate what you got. Amen? And find, try to find a way to bring those others in. Whether you say, I know your schedule is really busy. Maybe we can schedule like maybe once a, once a, uh, uh, every other, once a year. Go to get different families. If you got 12 families that maybe aren't showing up, that you can just get them to come with the people that are. One time a year. Start out that way if you have to. But don't, don't, don't be grudged. Don't say, oh, they're not here. I'm tired. Be excited about what you're doing. How many people are excited? How many people are excited? Come on. If you're excited, I want you to put your hands together and touch the Lord. Let me say this to you. You can't make anybody excited about the work you're doing if you're not. Amen. When you're doing something, you need to be talking like it's the best thing since sliced bread. I'm sorry. It's, it's the best thing since stewing foo-foo. Okay? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you ain't had none of this store and food, until you had this one. Okay? Oh, you ain't been to the prayer breakfast until you've been to this one. If you're not excited, if you don't drum it up, nobody else will. That's right. Amen? Amen. So don't be weary and well doing. Christ led from the front. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop here so that we can just get a couple of questions. Like we're supposed to do Q&A. Amen? The last things that I was saying was impacting the community requires engaging, transforming, spreading the good news, and helping. Amen? Impacting the community requires us to impact in a way that's ethical. Because the reason why some people don't come to the church is because of all of the nonsense that they've heard about other churches. But we need to change the reputation. We need to take back our narrative. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Titus 2, 1 through 13. When you get home, read that. The Lord laid on my heart to tell everybody this. Stop being afraid of having an opinion. Oh, we don't talk about uh, we don't talk about political stuff. Oh, we don't talk about God. Well, then what are you talking about? Because the only way that the communities are going to change is if we start talking about politics, if we start talking about God, if we start, back in the day in the 60s, pastors had their churches packed. And they talked about everything from civil rights to voting rights. And they did even voters' registrations in the church. And they let the people know, if you want to see a change, it's up to you. You have to go and vote. Hallelujah. So many of us are afraid of what? The orange man calling our countries echo countries? Who is he? We have to know what we're looking at. God would never send a wolf to guard the sheep. <laughs> I don't care. Everybody talking about, oh, oh, but he, he's for abortion. I mean, he's not for abortion. I'm not, I'm not for abortion. And he could care less about an abortion. That's the same person that cheated on every wife that he had. And most of them, why they were pregnant. But we act like we're so afraid to say that to someone that is trying to get good information. We are the people of God. We should be influencing everything at every level. The Haitians aren't eating cats and dogs. They're not eating the cats and dogs in Ohio. That's not happening. Nobody's having late-term abortions. They're not killing babies when they come out of the womb. No one's doing that. We have to know when we hear a lie, and most of us don't, and that's a problem. And we will sit with our mouths shut while somebody else is saying something because we don't want to ruffle their feathers. I'm not letting my brothers and sisters go to hell, not because of a liar. Someone that don't know the difference between 2 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians? Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. We have a responsibility. We should be impacting everything. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Last thing that I want to say is leave things better than we found. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what God wants. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. The floor is open for questions, comments, contributions. Hallelujah. 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 Any questions? Any contributions? Mike's, Sister Peace has the mic for anybody that has a question. Are there any questions online? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If not, then let us just stand on our feet. I know that they're going to call somebody to pray, but I just like to end with a little prayer, if that's okay. Let us stand on our feet. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we have heard your word on today. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I pray that this word will transform my thinking, oh God. Yeah. And put a running in our feet, oh God, to do your will. 
I pray that every person under the sound of my voice moving forward will make a lifelong impact on the community where they are. Amen. That when people say that church, they'll be saying that name for a hundred years. Amen. That when people say the pastor's name and the evangelist and the people of God's name, people will be saying that name for a hundred years Amen. of how excellent they were and how they changed their life, how they received their healing, how they received the whole shade of deliverance, how they received, oh God, the promise, how it transformed their thinking. Lord, we bless your name and worship you. Mighty God, we honor you. For it's in Jesus' holy and majestic name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep blessing the Lord. Keep blessing the Lord. Praise the Lord. God Jesus. God Jesus. I've been calling to the podium, my Father and the Lord, our President. You will be leading us in our prayer. Yes, God. Lord. Wonderful. Wow, 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 wow. Put your hands together for Jesus. Wow. This is the dimension of uh, the children of God that uh, we came for the first time. It's on fire. We, we, we thank you. We give God the glory for this very powerful, powerful, powerful position. My goodness. Lord bless you, my sister. Let's let's I want us to I want us to say a word of prayer for her. Let's yeah. let's start from there. Shall we all stand in our faith and let us just commit us to the hand of the living God? That the Lord God Almighty will multiply his grace upon our life, upon our ministry, that she will continue to do exploit for the Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the life of your daughter. Thank you for this that you kept her. Lord God Almighty, we pray you multiply your grace upon her, multiply your grace upon her, Lord, multiply your grace upon her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that she will continue to do more exploit to the glory of your name. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. We pray that the authority of heaven, that the oil of God's grace and people will not run dry on your head. You go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, wonderful name, we pray. So take for a few minutes. I'm going to be doing two things together while I stand up here. I will do both here. Then we're going to you know, pray. We're going to do presidential remarks. But let us just, uh, you know, let me, let me, let me just, let me just uh, give some, you know, things. I mean, why that Bible teaching was going on? My goodness, I was, uh, you know, uh, um, where's the Lord? Every community, every community. No, okay, have an expectation of the church. That is a food for thought. So, we are African ministers. We all have, God is giving us, you know, a service and we're doing what we are doing. It's not about time when I want you to take that with you. Hmm. This community have an expectation of us. So go and think about it. Go and think about it. And is that expectation being met? And I love the way my sister break down the word community, commune, in unity. Wow. And this communion in unity can only happen when we recognize, respect, and celebrate each other's gifting. Even those who are doing their thing out there, they have something in them that is positive that needs to be helped. 
And she was doing that, you know, and it reminds me of uh, many years ago, you know, I was having, uh, you know, uh, fellowship with some Spanish community. And in uh, in this very area and uh, in, in in this area, um, was what was that street no, near near the near the um no, 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 no I'm sorry uh that street that street where you know for, uh, the, uh, near near the Palais you know, church there. Oh, no, that's right here. South Dakota. On South Dakota, if we went down before when you get to when you get close to uh, after Rhode Island. There was a minister there, and I used to know that time, a lady minister. She had a member. That member, one day, while you know, we gave a testimony, she was a drug addict. Lost on the street. And um, now, and then, okay, of course, the mother was a Christian. You know, after a while, she was she was arrested. You know, over and over and over again, she became jailbird. You know, so at a particular time, she had a very long uh, time jail. The mother went to visit her. The mother said, "Honey, I love you so much. I prayed you in." What she was saying. Mommy, get me out of here. She said, no, I'm not getting you out of here. If I'm going, we're not getting out of here also until you are ready to be out yourself. The mother told her, I prayed you in here. You need to be off the street. And I've done everything possible. I just couldn't get you out of the street. I prayed you into the prison and you got to remain here. She said she was very angry with her mother. She hated her mother. The mother who did that went home and continued to pray. She gave her life to the Lord in the prison. And when the mother was convinced, the power of prayer, beloved, is what I'm talking about. When the mother was convinced of her, you know, of her relationship with Christ, she changed her prayer. Lo and behold, she was out of prison. Now, where I'm going is this. I have never in my life seen the kind of grace, the kind of anointing that made it possible. This very same jailbird, once a jailbird, once a harlot, who sells herself on, on 14th Street, D.C., according to her, all the time. I mean, I sat down and I had all this testimony from her. When this lady lay hands and pray for you, oil is dripping out of her hand. She didn't put anointing oil. She lay hands on people like this. By the time she's done, oil is dripping from your forehead from her hand. I've never seen that from anywhere. This once upon a time, a drug addict. So that gave me an idea that some of these folks on the street are probably, you know, great evangelists in preparation. That God was allowing them to live the life they live now because of what God wants to do through them. And I tell you, she was out there in the ministry of reaching out and converting and talking to these drug addicts and every other. And who knows them better than that kind of a woman? So you wrote them, you write that kind of person. How many pastors and churches have written out of when she was on the street? I started out, all this was coming to my mind as I was speaking. My goodness. Let's not talk about seasons. You know, we, in D.C., when I used to live in D.C., I see a whole lot of celebrations and community, this and that, you know, the Spanish having the Spanish day and this country having this, blocking the street, taking permission. In my street, we had actually, you know, we have blocked street. We do this very annual, you know, an, an annual thing when we do street party. What if, as a church, we start something like this that is inclusive, something that brings community together? Without necessarily, you know, getting the megaphone and want to preach and say Jesus is coming. We know Jesus is coming, but how we tell it to them is very important. Yeah. Why not creating that kind of atmosphere yeah. whereby we can, you know, I mean, the community party that we do, 
I mean, it was it was the unbeliever, you know, and I mean, you know, and to our neighbors. This very simple guy with simple identity knocking on everybody's door on our block, reminded everyone and everything what you can. And there is not, no one is asking for this or anything like that. Everyone will come out in front of your house and you're going to set a table. We're going to, you know, I mean, uh, 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 you know, hot dog and all the kind of thing. And, and people coming from all over, and we invite our friends from other communities. And people we eat and everything like that. And in the process of that, there are those who, who have this uh, MLM, you know, businesses, those who do Medicaid, do different, and they are handing out flyers and everything like that. What if church do something like that? And why do you listen to those who are handing out flyers for Medicaid, handing out flyers for this business, computer school, uh, the child care and everything, and we hand out the word of God and every, we see the opportunity to speak to them. Remember, we are bold and do something deliberate about it. The kind of message that we share with us and us, that is where ours will be different. And we allow those who want to share other things also to do, like those who are doing Medicaid, those who are, doing, you know, just let them know, bring your flyers and not the rest of them. But you know exactly, we just want to, because if they don't trust you, they cannot trust what you do or what you say. Give them opportunity to, to flow. And be visible. Wow. How visible are we in our churches? How visible are we? As, as, as you were well, dishing out, I just I was just beginning to imagine. We have several churches in all the communities. If your church is impacting the community, yours is impacting, yours is by its back, it, it, it's impacting and everything. We focus on Christ, not on our local assembly. You know, and I began to imagine that, that if we will come, if we all we understand this, and we come together to begin to do this, and we take our assemblies out of the equation and put Christ in everything that we do. So that when, when I minister to someone who say, you know, me not speak English. You know, and then there is the next church to me is a Spanish church. For as long as you focus on Christ, I can direct to there. You know, I don't have to, because of you alone, create a second service, which is what is common among us. I don't want to lose him. He has to be in my church. She has to be in my church and everything. And because I missed out to this one Spanish person, I want to create a second service as Spanish in the evening so that I don't lose you. Says who? If that, if the other Spanish pastor, we are working together, all I need to do, oh, Pastor Alonso, you know, this very sister, I just minister to her. She does not speak English. You know, so... More to follow up with her and let her be a member of your church and everything. Instead of me creating a second service because that then I begin to, begin to bring up an interpreter who will interpret in Spanish because I want to keep one person. And I have to put that extra word out. So that means my focus is on my assembly, not on Christ. But if I send out to Pastor Adonso's church, and I, and I, you know, occasionally I follow up with Pastor Adonso, is she... You know, is she is she coming? You know, is she still coming and everything like that? And and I call her up and I said, hey, "Were you in church, Pastor?" I also said, "It is still last Sunday." By this day, we know that we are one. Where they see the unity, the body of Christ. Oh my goodness! When your church reach out and part the community, man, the party community, before you know, we will impart the whole world. Because, no, I mean, we have too many, so many churches out there that when we all do what we are doing, I mean, it, it's just a matter of time. We will impact the entire world. And you talk about someone who say, well, you know, we can't do all these things. We are, we are small churches. 